General Gill, I want to begin with you. We had had some conversations about uh, what happened December 2023 at Joint Base langley Eustis, where we had incursion of UASs, small UASs, for almost a two-month period. Uh, we got briefs about uh, what happened there. They came in well lit. They weren't trying to hide anything. I felt bad for the base commander because he wanted to do something and wasn't getting backing from folks up the chain of command. We had a bunch of resources there where we could do things. Uh, None of those were used. Uh, If it wasn't for NASA Langley next door, we wouldn't have even had the sensors to be able to sense uh, those uh, unmanned aerial systems that are there on site. Let me ask this. Uh, We have, from a hearing then, asked for a priority list under 130I. What bases are priority? What's being done to protect those bases? Uh, How do we make sure those things don't occur again? I believe that our adversaries are probing, trying to figure out what we can do, what we can't do. uh, And that's very telling to them what they saw that day or what they saw over that month. It was very telling to them that there wasn't the type of reaction that was necessary. My question is this. What has been done in the meantime for us to be assured that NORTHCOM and NORAD is doing everything possible on these bases to protect them from these UAS threats. What's our counter UAS? Where are we with prioritizing these bases? Where are we with training our security forces on base to protect those bases? Where are we with supplying kit to at least the priority bases or have some network of equipment that necessary to make sure we're protecting these bases? Congressman, since the uh, Langley incursions of uh, December 2023, NORAD, or excuse me, NORTHCOM mm-hmm. has requested and then last November was given the responsibility to synchronize the DOD and, if necessary, interagency response to counter UA, uh, to UAS incursions. Uh, during that time, uh, we've, we've conducted uh, three assisted responses where we can uh, use our new responsibilities to bring uh, capabilities to a base. Uh, similar to what you saw at at Langley, uh, but this time with the authority to operate those systems based on our headquarters' close ties with the interagency and LNOs to get the FAA and other uh, authorities that are are, uh, necessary uh, to operate once they land. The responsibility for defending bases uh, resides with the services and with the installation, but what NORTHCOM has done is proposed a uh, process where we would bring in flyaway kits to supplement or, uh, in the case where there are no capabilities, provide the initial capability at that base uh, to, to defeat that. Now, we, we don't have those kits yet, uh, but uh, we're in the process of, of acquiring those. I would say there's certainly a sense of urgency there in making sure that we get that done, especially here at the homeland. Sir, I share that sense of urgency. Thank you. We, uh, we continue to have folks who surveil or send drones over our bases or put infrastructure things that have the potential to surveil. Uh, how serious are we in NORTHCOM in the protection of, in protecting and hardening our bases against surveillance and also attacks? Congressman, uh, between both NORAD and NORTHCOM, uh, we're, we're very engaged in what you described, Nor- NORAD, to ensure that the, uh, the air sovereignty of the United States and Canada are maintained, uh, NORTHCOM for the uh, UAS challenge that, that you mentioned, and uh, we're, we're working uh, with the services and with the department to increase not only the capability, but also uh, to expand the authorities we have to uh, knock out not only uh, aircraft or UASs that are uh, a direct threat, but also that are surveilling uh, over the installation. And I'd like to even see it expanded beyond the installation to ensure they can't see anything sensitive on our basis. Thank you, General. You didn't mention balloon or dirigible. You mentioned UAS 17 times, Chinese three times, China seven times, but you never connected the dots between the Chinese balloon or Chinese UAS. And so I'm going to ask you, Mr. Leonardo, has the Department of Defense given the general the authorities to shoot down anything that is up and around our sensitive military bases or the airspace of the United States, these UASs? Does he have to call you, or can he do it himself? Uh, Congressman, thank you for that question. Um, as you know, it's, it's difficult in the homeland. Yes or no? Uh, 
I, I don't. I had to take that question, that specific question, for the record, sir. All right. So we need to have the authorities push down to the general, and the general needs to push it down to the person on the base. And when you mentioned that you don't have the capabilities, but you know you want to because of the procurement system, that's a real issue. It's been two years, so we have to learn, sir. I want you to not have to call him and uh, Pete Hegseth, who I trust explicitly, implicitly. I mean, he's a great dude, but he shouldn't have to make that call. He shouldn't have to make that call. Nor should you. I just want to make sure that that is very clear. Sir, I do have the authority to You do, right now, you, you can? But you over an installation, over an installation or a threat to the United States coming in, uh, you know, from the outside, okay, I have so the authority to shoot that What's a threat? Down. It was a Chinese balloon and the Biden administration lied to every single person saying that they couldn't penetrate that stuff, that we were blocking them, that's not true. You need proximity. And unless a plane was flying with uh, ECM jammers, that's not true. The Biden administration lied to everybody. I want to make sure you can shoot down something over Canada. You can shoot down something over the United States. Um, I recently participated in a CODEL in Southcom. And by the way, I served in the Navy SEALs. Most of my experience was Southcom. And I learned that the cartels will lie, cheat, steal, and they will kill you to get their way. And there is no way they're giving up a billion dollar business. Now, um, when we were down at the border, we talked with the mayor, the sheriff, business owners. We met with ICE agents. Uh, Border Patrol, and the 10th Mountain Division. And we asked them, you know, what are your concerns? What's going on? And they said that on one particular Saturday, border crossings were zero compared to 2,000 crossings a year before. And so I think, as I heard one of the uh, members say, is we didn't need new policies. We needed a new president who was serious about protecting the homeland. But that being the case, what I heard from every one of those groups was they can see drones coming from uh, Mexico, they can see where they're coming from, and they're hovering around our Border Patrol vehicles, they're hovering around our military bases. And General, I heard you say that you had permission to shoot them down, but I spoke with five different agencies and they all, as of a couple of weeks ago, said they were not sure. So it is not clear. So I'd like to hear what the answer is. Can they or can they not shoot these drones down? They, when I said we could shoot them down, that's over an installation that is covered under 130I. The forces on the border at this time are not because they're, they're mobile. And so I've put in a request for 130I to be expanded to include uh, U.S. forces within five miles of the border. I understand. We're, there are many ways to possibly solve this problem. We're looking at legislation that takes a different approach, but we'll talk about that later. But we should have had this settled two years ago, basically there are many times in our history where our soldiers have been caught with their pants down and they're reactive, not proactive, and we should be able to detect and engage far before they get anywhere near our soldiers or our installations. Last year we saw a notable increase in drone and UAV activity near sensitive infrastructure, including military installations. In my home state of Missouri, we're proud to host several crucial and vital military and intelligence installations, including NGA West and my district in St. Louis. I'm deeply concerned regarding the threats unauthorized drones pose to our intelligence operations and military personnel. General Guillot, are there additional authorizations NORAD and NORTHCOM need that could help enhance their ability to detect and counter unauthorized drones and UA, UASs. Congressman, the, uh, the biggest benefit that we would get would be from expanding uh, 130I authorities to include uh, information sharing with, on, on those tracks with uh, federal, state, and local law enforcement would be to uh, classify all DOD installations as uh, covered under 130I instead of just select ones. And then also to expand the area that we can engage a UAS instead of being limited to the perimeter of the installation to go slightly outside so we can get uh, UAVs that might be looking across into our installations or somebody that we detected and is trying to get away that we can get them and capture whatever it is that they uh, surveilled over our installations. Uh, first, uh, some of my colleagues have talked about this, several on counter UAS, um, but I want to just reemphasize the importance of this point and, and share in my district. Uh, we have a really interesting setup where we have uh, Stewart Air National Guard Base, which is both 
uh, Air National Guard, but also a, a, an actual international civilian airport, which presents a lot of complexities. And, and late last year, we actually had um, a series of controlled airspace drone incursions in December 2024, including several very, very sizable uh, drones that were within 25 feet of our C-17 fleet at, at Stewart. Uh, the airport actually had to close down under um, on the FAA side, which is in and of itself unprecedented. And in conversations with uh, leadership there at Stewart, they are still doing their best, certainly, and working very, very hard, but feel that they still don't have full clarity on authorities, and I appreciate some of your answers on that, General Gio, today, um, and also certainly don't have the tech and, and some of the uh, other support pieces that, I, that they need. So on that note, General Gio, um, you talked about 130i. Have you actually recommended to the Secretary that all installations have that? I know you said that in your previous answer. Has that recommendation been made? Yes, Congressman, I have made that recommendation. Is, is your sense that that's moving quickly or that there's anything we can do to accelerate that given the, the urgency? Sir, it's been uh, well received and I think it's moving quickly. That and the other three elements that I brought up that uh, I think we need to, to better address this threat, this growing threat. Thank you. Um, and I know I think it was uh, my colleague Mr. Whitman spoke about sort of deploying some sort of relatively rapidly deployable set of tools, is that something that uh, the committee can support or that, that we can support to push on? Congressman, I'll take any help I can get there. Uh, we have the authority now to use flyaway kits. I think we have the great relationship with FAA that would allow us to operate them quickly. Uh, we just need to procure and you know field those kits so we can re respond to Picatinny and, and, and Stuart in a, in a fast, you know, my goal would be inside of 24 hours being able to respond. And just to, to build on that very quickly, to their credit on the ground and, and partnering with the, the TAG in New York State, there are, there are some very uh, sophisticated tech capabilities there at Stewart at, that they're exercising and practicing now. And so figuring out to the chairman's point and the ranking member's point how to speed up the procurement of those exact kind of capabilities, I think is something we're, we're all keen to push on. Uh, very quickly, um, I wanted to shift to a different topic and, and uh, bring both General and the Admiral into this, um, and, and possibly you, Mr. Leonardo, as well, if we have time. There was very concerning reporting uh, about a potential consolidation of Northcom and Southcom into a new entity. Um, not a lot of public details available, um, but I, I want to commend and, and acknowledge my colleagues, including Chairman Rogers and, and SAS Chairman Wicker speaking out, saying at a minimum, we're very concerned about reports that this uh, is being considered, and quote, we will not accept significant changes to our warfighting structure that are made without a rigorous interagency process, coordination with combatant commanders and the Joint Staff, and collaboration with Congress. Um, actually, I'll start actually with you, Mr. Leonardo. Is that happening right now? Is this, is this real? Is this just another thing that's sort of been put out there? Or is there an actual interagency process playing along? And do you plan to update the Congress and this committee on that? Um, I, I don't want to get ahead of internal de deliberations, but I will note we want to maintain a strong collaboration uh, with Congress to make sure that uh, you have up-to-date information. And I'll also note, as I started today, the homeland and, uh, and Western Hemisphere are high priorities for this administration, so any such decisions would have to weigh against what resources are necessary in order to fulfill the missions that we need to do in those areas. Do you acknowledge, and does the administration acknowledge, that this would require an actual act of Congress to do? I wouldn't uh, like to speak on the hypothetical uh, questions. Well, it's not hypothetical. I'm asking you, would removing a combatant command, which has been proposed, re require, or emerging to, to be specific, require congressional uh, approval and, and uh, ultimately authorization? I'd have to uh, review with the lawyers, sir, um, whether or not that would require um, congressional authorization. 